What's up guys? This is Derek from Classic Game Room. Boy, am I miserable today. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the cold or... It's probably the cold. I'm just... I'm tired. It's frigid outside. And I am tired of it. I'm sick and tired of wearing galoshes. I don't even wear galoshes. That's how tired I am of galoshes. Now, fortunately, it's, it's gonna get pretty warm in here today. Not just because, you know, generally speaking, places indoors are warmer than places you know, outside, but also because I'm playing some pretty sweet video games today. Check this out. Look what I'm doing today. You guys, you guys know what this is. It's Beautiful Joe for the Nintendo GameCube. My camera won't even focus on it. That's how cold it is. My camera's like, f***ing, I don't even, I'm not even focusing. I'm like, this is ridiculous. My camera's tired of galoshes. But in the meantime, we got other cool stuff you can watch over at ClassicGameRoom.com. Because what else are you going to do? It's 10 degrees below zero outside. What, what are you going to do? Well, you can go, go make snow angels. You freeze your, your face off. It just falls right off because of the cold. That's not what you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to go to ClassicGameRoom.com. Because that's where TJ's got a review of a game called Dysfunctional Systems on the PC. And that sounds interesting. And also I have a review of a game called Unepic for the Wii U. It actually originated on the PC, but now it's, in, it's on the Wii U eShop. And uh, it's actually kind of cool being able to play it with the gamepad uh, for a lot of reasons. So check out my review on that. If you like Metroidvania, old school, uh, you know, games in that vein, uh, Unepic is going to be right up your alley. It's, it's really cool Metroidvania RPG on the Wii U. You can watch my review of it right now. Because what else are you going to do? It's, it's the worst day of my life. And then tomorrow, uh, I got a review of uh, episode one of this new uh, point-and-click adventure. It's on the PlayStation Network for the PS3. It's called The Raven. Uh, I'm going to have chapter one, which is called The Eye of the Sphinx. Uh, I'll have the review, our review of that tomorrow on ClassicGameRoom.com. Uh, if you like point-and-click games, this is, a, this is one of those. It's not a great one. It's kind of boring. But then again, you know, so is reading. And there's a lot of reading and listening and listening and talking. I can't, even, I can't even listen to myself talk, let alone other people. I'm disinterested in myself, let alone others. Anyway, that's what we're up to today and tomorrow over on ClassicGameRoom.com. We got stuff happening. I'll talk to you Friday about what we have in store for the weekend. Uh, but as for right now, I'm gonna head over to the Wind Squid pubs, check out the Ask CGR Undertow thread, and see what you guys, see what kind of questions you have for me today. Well, there's a good one from someone named Thomas Model Series. Uh, he wants to know what GameCube games I recommend the most. That's a great question because uh, the GameCube is actually one of my favorite consoles. Uh, it, it didn't have a huge library, and it was uh, obviously Nintendo's least successful home console. But for me personally, it was actually the console that really got me back into gaming. Um, the, the games that it did have were fantastic. And because it was like the third place system, it, it was afforded the ability to be unique and quirky and different. And, uh, and, and I think the GameCube just inherently was that. I mean, it had a handle, you know, it had, it had four slots on it, it had all kind of weird things that, you know, I mean, it, it, was, it was a unique, different console. And uh, I, I think, as a result, it, it has a really cool library of games. As, in terms of what I recommend the most, you gotta get Metroid Prime. Uh, to me, that's not only the best GameCube game, it's one of Nintendo's best games ever. I mean, that game is not only fun, but it's artistically stunning, it's gorgeous to look at even today. It's a real testament to how powerful the GameCube really was and the, the graphics it could pump out. Also, obviously The Wind Waker. I mean, that game is stunning to this day. It's, it's just gorgeous to look at. So Metroid Prime, Wind Waker, Super Mario Sunshine. I mean, those are pretty obvious, you know, pretty obvious recommendations. Uh, you know, Mario Kart, Smash Brothers uh, Melee is probably, uh, people will tell you, is the best Smash Brothers. Not my favorite, but it's a fantastic Smash Brothers game. Uh, what else? Definitely like um, Pikmin. The Pikmin games, I think, really summed up the GameCube uh, well in terms of Nintendo trying some weird, different things, even with established franchises, but also, you know, introducing something new and different like Pikmin. Uh, both of the Pikmin games are awesome. Even, you know, go crazy on the GameCube. There's weird stuff like Okama, what was that game called? Odama, with like, it had a microphone, but it was a pinball game, but it was a war game. That game was really sweet. Check it, look into that. Honestly, just go into like, go into your, your local used game store and just browse the GameCube section and you'll find all kind of weird, crazy things. Just make sure you get Metroid Prime, Resident Evil 4, and The Wind Waker before you get anything else. And then, 
you'll be set for the next, like, month, because you'll just be playing those non-stop. All right, one more. This one comes from Leo Livy, uh, who actually has a really high score on Space Scar over on ClassicGameRoom.com as well. So congratulations on that, Leo Livy. I want to know what cheat code you put in for that one. Anyway, he wants to know what I think of the Wii U's gamepad. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going around about the Wii U and how Nintendo's dropping its financial, you know, uh, projections for the console. Listen, everyone just breathe. The Wii U will be fine. At the very least, it'll be a GameCube Part 2, and that's not a, the worst thing. Um, as in, in, in terms of the console itself, like forget the, the, the financial end of it, forget the retail side. In terms of just the console itself, listen, it's a good console and it has a really cool controller. I, I love the gamepad. Uh, the games that actually use it and use it in a thoughtful and creative way, I find are, are better because of it. The gamepad is a really unique thing and it's something that uh, obviously people are going to have a lot of different opinions on, but it's something that if you sit down and actually use it, it's not as gimmicky as you may think. It's a lot like the Wii Remote in that it does have practical purposes, especially for a game like Resident Evil Revelations. I love it in a game like that. I've always got my map up. I can just quickly tap on the screen to change weapons and manage my inventory, you know? Stuff like that's awesome. And even the games that just, you know, use it to get the HUD, like, off the screen and just put it on the gamepad, or even just playing the games on the gamepad and, you know, freeing up the television for, you know, if you, someone else wants to watch television, but you want to play Mario, well, guess what? You can do that with the gamepad. I can switch it to the controller. They can watch TV. It's a happier world. The gamepad makes a happier world. Maybe not for Nintendo's investors, but that's a different story. Anyway, uh, that's enough questions for today. I've been yammering on, I don't know, long enough. I kind of like this. I don't know. Anyway, I'll be back Friday. We'll talk more, and I'll have uh, some updates on what's coming up this weekend over on ClassicGameRoom.com. Stay warm, guys. Don't go. Don't go outside. There's nothing to see. I'll tell you, there's stuff to see. Is ClassicGameRoom.com. Please go watch our stuff. Come on, man. It's really cold, and you know that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Just have a heart.